is holding back causing you more stress is holding back causing you more stress that's what we are talking about in today's episode of frazzle the podcast with me your host kelly swingler the burnoutologist if you are new or if this is your umpteenth time of being here thank you very much frazzled is the perfectly imperfect perfectly imperfect can't even say that probably but perfectly imperfect podcast where it is uncut unedited unscripted what you see or what you hear is what you get uh, we just go for it right this is my cure for perfection and having to have everything in control and just allowing myself to let things be easy uh, so it really is just as it is right Mess or not, um, stuttering or not, messing up my words or not, background noise or not, this is what we are here for. Reducing the stress and allowing ourselves to be much more fabulous and much less frazzled, right? We do not need to add additional stress to ourselves. So this is my this is my kind of cure for myself uh, in terms of, of doing that. And many of you have said that listening is also helping you too. So hello. Welcome to another episode of Frazzled. So is holding back causing you more stress? This might seem a bit of a contradiction to some of the things that we've been talking through um, over the last few weeks, right? We've talked, um, we talked about being addicted to work. We've talked about um, rethinking rest. We have talked about me almost crashing. And today I'm talking to you about whether holding back is causing you more stress. So let's kind of let's let's kind of place this in some uh, in some context first. I am a doer. Right. I'm a doer. We spoke a lot about this in our Let's Rethink Rest episode. And so for me, like, I like to get stuff done. Right. I like to get stuff done. I am I am still somebody that works at a very fast pace. I am still somebody that has always got a lot of things on my list. I've always got kind of big projects. I've always got the next goal. I've always got the next thing that I am working towards. And I rest, right? And again, we we reframed rest a few weeks ago, didn't we, when we started thinking about it started thinking about rest as ways to restore, right? Restore our energy. Taking rest from what a lot of us that are doers think as do nothing, right? Because as a, as a doer, but for any of us, right? How do we do nothing? Whereas actually, if we reframe rest into these restorative activities, right? Restorative tasks, finding ways in which to restore our energy, then that encourage us as, encourages us more. I really do need to put my teeth back in today, don't I? But it encourage, encourages us, still can't say it, encourages us more to take that time out, to rest in a restorative way, to recharge, to reset, to re-energize, to do those things that make us feel good, to give ourselves those moments of flow where we can just completely lose ourselves and we're charging, recharging all of our energy at the same time. I also find a lot, and this particularly came up for me when I was trying to do this do nothing thing that lots of people were talking about, right, that I thought rest was. And I can still sometimes find myself um, in this dynamic of feeling like I have to rest, right? Feeling like actually I, I need to be doing my yoga, I need to be reading, I need to be writing, I need to be just enjoying this space or enjoying this environment, try to be more present. And yet sometimes I have that, that kind of niggle that's in my, oh, just like, just, I just want to tick that thing off my list. I just want to quickly have that conversation. I just want to do those things. And I have found repeatedly over the years that the more I try to ignore the niggle, right, the niggle that is just do that one thing and it will be okay, 
very often, the more that I try to ignore that niggle and kind of work against it and force myself into, no, I need to be here restoring, right? I need to be here recharging, resetting. This is where I need to be. The niggle of, but if I just ticked that thing off my list, right? If I just quickly responded to that email, if I just sent that email, if I just had that conversation, if I just ticked that thing off my list, if I just did all of those things or just did that one thing, then I'd feel better. And so often it is that push pull, isn't it? Because I can, maybe you are the same, I can find myself getting more stressed and more anxious the more that I try to avoid doing the doing and instead step into that rest space. And this is where we really need to create the balance, right? Because often, I'm sure, I could absolutely still find myself working 24-7, 365 days a year. Right? I genuinely think that is my natural default. Some of that, I'm sure, will have been taught and learned and conditioned. So I'm, I'm still doing a lot of this unlearning. I understand and haven't understood for a number of years now that as an introvert, and least many people still find that really difficult to believe, either because of my hair or my loudness or my outfits or something, but I'm, I'm very, very much an introvert. I know that I need to recharge on my own in my own space, right? Being surrounded by lots and lots of people is not the best way for me to recharge. If I've done um, big speaking gigs or, you know, I've done I've done big events, um, even sometimes if I've you know been kind of running training online, still picking up on the energy of all of those people. I do need at least sometimes a day just to reset myself, right, to, to have that space on my own. But that doesn't always mean that I need space on my own doing nothing. Right. Sometimes I need space on my own to clear my emails, to process my thoughts, to get outside with the dog, to sit in the garden, to read a book. Sometimes it is recording podcasts or recording videos or planning my week. Right. The, the space that I need on my own isn't always just, again, restoring, right, doing nothing in that time. Sometimes it is just that quiet time, right, to process, to think, to hear my own thoughts, to get stuff done, to get things off the list. And I've been speaking to lots of people recently who are finding that inner battle with themselves, right? They're, they're arguing because actually they feel, they feel that they would be calmer if they just put the washing on. They feel they would be calmer if they just quickly ran the hoover around. They feel they would be calmer if they just did their online shop. They feel they would be calmer if they had that conversation. And yet they're trying to force themselves into moments of rest with all of this stuff still going around in their head, right? All of the to-do list, all of the things that need to be done. That's causing them more stress. But they're still trying to force themselves into the rest. I think what we need to be really mindful of, and, and this is going to be individual for each of us. I genuinely think that, right? I think this is going to be different for, for all of us. I know that in that restorative time, that downtime, that recharging time, whatever it is that we need, for example, um, you'll know if you've been listening for a long time, I am absolutely at my most calm and my most present when I am on my yoga mat, right? Absolutely, right? And my yoga mat anywhere. I can be on retreat in India. I can be in my garden. I can be in my conservatory, my living room, my bedroom, anywhere, right? Where it can be a yoga class, whatever it is. But I am my most calm and most present when I'm on my yoga mat. For any of you that practice yoga, and again, I think something else that we desperately need to learn more of in the West is actually bringing yoga, the practice of yoga, right, into more of our everyday lives. It's not just what we do on the mat. Right? The whole premise of yoga is that we bring that learning into our lives off the mat in order 
started to help us, but that's still where I'm at my most calm. Ideally, if I'm outside or on the beach or whatever, that's where it's even more beautiful and lovely and calming. But I'm at my best when I'm on my mat. I also know, though, sometimes before I get on my mat, I need to clear some of my space, right? Sometimes I'm like, I need to clear that stuff on my desk. Sometimes I know I need to clear my emails. Sometimes I know I need to go and put the washing on. Sometimes I know I need to get the dog out for a walk first. Sometimes I know, and I had this last week, I really need to get on the yoga mat. But we just done, you know, kind of a load of sorting out some of our wardrobes and some of our cupboards and sorting out some old clothes. And I had this kind of huge pile of clothes literally just like piled up in the corner of my bedroom and I wanted to just do my yoga practice in the bedroom and family were downstairs I just wanted to do and I knew I was in a kind of I, I just I need to clear those clothes in order to feel like I've got the right space the right environment to be able to do my yoga right so I didn't want to be constantly seeing the washing so I took 10 minutes I sorted out these clothes, put them into bags, then moved them to where I knew that they needed to go. And then I felt ready to get on the mat. And my focus then was on being on the mat. Again, we could argue perhaps I'm not doing yoga right because I should I should have been able to get onto my mat regardless. And I should have been able to practice my yoga and focus on my yoga, even knowing that there was this thing in the corner, right? Therefore, you're not doing yoga properly, yada, yada, yada. But I also know taking those steps beforehand allowed me to get onto my mat in the right frame of mind. I wasn't bringing the stress or the pile of clothes onto the mat with me. And I wonder how many of you, when you're in that rest phase, it can be very difficult, can't it, to try to be present if we're bringing all of the baggage with us. And so for me personally, I think sometimes it is, you know, if I'm looking at rest as an activity, right, restoring my energy as an activity, as something to do knowing but I want it to be beneficial. I know for me, but let's say I'm like, I'm gonna, there's this, I don't know, TV series that I want to watch, right? There's this film that's been recommended. I'm, I'm gonna, I've got a couple of hours to myself this afternoon in the house. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit and watch this film. But I also know if I've got a to-do list as long as my arm or I've got things that need to be prepping or I've got I can't force myself to relax, to enjoy the film, knowing that there is all of this stuff. Whereas actually, if I did the stuff, I could then enjoy watching the film. And I say this is about balance because so many of us put off repeatedly our restorative time. And that's not what I'm talking about here. It's important that we take that time for ourselves. But I also think sometimes it's about permission, right? It's about reframing. Like that example that I just gave about my yoga mat and the pile of clothes, I wasn't saying I'm just going to sort those clothes and then I'm going to hoover and then I'm going to walk the dog and then I'm going to have a bath and then I'm going to clean the bath and then I'm going to Um, then I'm going to do the shopping and then I'm going to do this and then I'm going to do this and then I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this and then it's been three or four days before I've got on my yoga mat because I've just kept doing 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 in that moment I knew with the pile of clothes that needed to have something done with them I knew by moving them I would be in a better safe better place for myself to rest Sitting and watching a film, if I know that the kitchen is a mess or I've got bed sheets to wash or the gardening needs doing or there's a load and load of stuff that I know all I'm going to be doing whilst I'm watching this film is thinking about all of that stuff. I'm not benefiting from the downtime to sit and enjoy the film, right? I'm not benefiting from it because my head and my thoughts are elsewhere. 
my stress levels are rising because my head and my thoughts are elsewhere. I'm not gaining the benefit of the rest. And that's what I'm talking about here, right? It's the benefit of. Sometimes we do need to just be able to say, you know what, the, the to-do list needs to wait, right? All of that stuff needs to wait. And we need to give ourselves permission to come into the space or the activity or the task or whatever it is that we need and say, for today, this is all I'm doing, right? For today or for the next hour, this is all I'm doing. I also think sometimes for us, it can be more beneficial to do the things if we know that we're going to spend all of our time, energy and attention focusing on the thing that we haven't done and instead of trying to force ourselves to rest. So sometimes by doing the thing, we then allow ourselves to come into permission. And where I, again, where I've noticed this for myself, and I spotted this with a couple of friends as well, and they will know who they are. So we've, we've had the conversation about this. I, I'm going to think I still do, but again, I've, I've noticed some of these just me. I have always been a kind of like true crime, um, can I say enthusiast as does the enthusiast even fit the true crime? I don't know. Because it can be quite gruesome, right? But I've always been kind of fascinated. And, and the, the kind of fascination of the true crime stuff has always been for me about the psychology. Right? The psychology of what makes the killer or, or any of those things. It's the psychology that's always kind of really gripped me. And there are channels now that we can get on TV, right, that are full of true crime stuff. And I, oh, I love I love these programs. Like that's what you said to everybody. And I could spend all weekend or all week binging on a lot of this true crime stuff. What I also realized realized I was doing was I wasn't fully paying attention to the tr true crime stuff all of the time, because I'd constantly then be sat scrolling on my phone whilst I was watching the true crime thing. The more time that I was spending on my phone. I wasn't fully paying attention to what was going on on the TV, but then I was finding myself becoming over anxious because of all the things that I was checking on my Facebook. So I've just checked my social media. And then I'd find myself, and I was getting to the point of, I don't know, like tens and tens and tens and tens of pickups on my phone a day. Because I I just got quick, I just got quickly checked this, just got quickly checked. So, oh, let me just see if that thing's available on Amazon. Let me just see if that thing's available from Bowdoin. Let me just, oh, let me, let me now sit shopping. Oh yeah, I'll just buy all of that now. Um, let me just see if I can do that. Let me just see if I can do that. So even though I was telling myself that I was enjoying some downtime, that I was just chilling in front of the TV, I wasn't because I was constantly fueling myself with pings and notifications and likes and looking for that additional dopamine hit, right? So I'm like, oh, yeah, I love true crime. But I was never watching any of it. I was never in a calm enough state to just sit and watch an episode of a true crime documentary. Because it would start and I'd be straight on my phone. And I think about it now, and I think a lot of that constant phone picking up was almost like a distraction from what it was that I was watching on TV, right? I was trying to avoid what I was watching or hearing by focusing my time and attention on my phone and then telling myself that I really enjoyed what I was watching. And over the last few months, I've not even, I've not been forcing myself to watch different things, but I've been paying attention to how I feel. And actually, I've been watching a lot more kind of light-hearted, like light-hearted films, right? Comedies, um, some kind of tongue-in-cheek kind of romance type stuff some really kind of cheesy stuff that I would never ordinarily have watched. But I'm actually, do you know what, I just want like an hour in front of the TV. And I've been looking for those kind of feel-good films. There have been some fairly gruesome things that have been advertised on, you know, very indifferent kind of TV services. Um, and I know that six months ago, a year ago, I would have been binging them all the way through. But there's something that's like, no, because you just need the rest. And again, I think it was creating that awareness. I became aware that on the things that I thought were calming me, I was then actually staying stressed 
because I was spending more time on my phone or feeling like I just need to quickly grab my laptop and do my emails. So I was never fully present in the thing that I would tell everybody was helping me to switch off my mind and allow me to feel calm. So there's a kind of different kind of things there, but I wonder if that is the same for you. Are you trying to force yourself into a space of rest and then keeping your stress levels really high because you're stressing about everything that's going on around you or you're constantly doing, I'll just check my emails, I'll just send that message, I'll just do my online shop, I'll just buy this, I'll just buy that, I'll just check, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just. And never actually benefiting from being present enough to be in the moment. As I said, my, my, I don't know if it is necessarily advice, but maybe my, I don't know, right, take, take whatever it is that you want from today. But I would encourage you to just create a level of awareness for yourself. Are you present in the rest time, in the downtime, in the recharge time? Are you getting the benefit from your downtime or are you just finding it to do something else again I've, I've got lots of friends that will say to me you know I'm in the car I'm listening to podcasts or I'm listening to this self-help book or I'm listening to this or I'm listening to that I know for me I need kind of two things when I'm in the car and that's either complete and utter silence or I just need my music on full blast and I go like full-on kind of carpool karaoke right I become you know the best singer in the world singing to all of my favorite songs that are very very top of my top of my voice you know and I, and I don't care who can see me or sometimes you can hear me if I've got the windows down I just don't care they're the two things that I need in the car I don't want to be focusing on podcasts and audiobooks in the car because I know that wouldn't be of benefit to me for some of my friends it is I know when I'm out walking the dog, I just need to be me and the dog. Occasionally I might record a quick video, but I'm there's just me and the dog. And so I've got some friends that would say, well, you know, I listen to my favorite podcast when I'm out for a walk. That wouldn't, that wouldn't do because then I'd be focusing on the podcast and I wouldn't I wouldn't be paying attention to the nature and what's going on outside whilst I'm walking the dog. I wouldn't be pay, paying attention to how I'm feeling whilst I'm doing that, because it would be a distraction technique. I think for a lot of us, right, it's like if I do that thing, then I can listen to this or then I can do this or then I can watch this thing. Actually, what if throughout the course of our day, and maybe it is, but, uh, you know, I know if I'm listening to a podcast, I need to be listening to the podcast. Not trying to have some different downtime to do it. We're all different. But want my question, are you benefiting from your downtime or are you trying to hold back from doing the things that you know you need to do? And then it's adding to you more stress in the moment. Might be some things that you need to change or tweak, amend, might be some different things that you need to think about when it comes to rest and restorative activities and downtime and and all of those things. And, I, and not just. You know, I'm not just talking like weekends. I mean, like throughout the course of your working day. I still know so many of you are eating at your desks whilst responding to emails. Or catching up on calls whilst you are having your lunches. We need the downtime. And what I'm saying to you for ages, right? The, we only have so many musical notes, right? There are only so many musical notes, but we have millions of pieces of music out there in the world and a lot of it of course is the composition of the notes right the order in which the notes are are played the consistency but also the magic in the music that we listen to comes from the pauses in between each of those notes Without those pauses for a lot of our favourite songs, for a lot of our piece, you know, favourite pieces of music, they wouldn't have the same impact. They wouldn't have the same power. They wouldn't have the same message. A lot of the time, the power comes from the pause. And if we can all learn to create more power from those pauses, then hopefully we can also stop creating ourselves more stress when we feel we need to hold back 
we can create more calm in those moments that are for rest and restoring and recharging. I'm going to leave you that with leave you with that for today. The power is in the pause. I will be back with you again. Some of those pauses, and I will be back with you again soon. Take care for now.